All right guys, so we're out here at a new airport today. I've actually flown to this airport a few times, but I've never driven here and actually taken off from here. So I've flown, landed, and taken off, but um, it's pretty nice here. And on Sundays, evidently, there's a bunch of people here. So it's like an ultralight club, and uh, it looks like it's gonna be a fun day of flying. It's been a while since I posted anything, been a while since I made any videos. I actually got COVID, so um, it was a bummer, I'll be honest, but uh, I'll share with you guys what that was like when we get in the air. Peace. destination like a cross-country destination for a long time it's a really convenient airport to fly to um, from my main airport that I fly out of but it's surrounded by trees so it's not great on windy days the today is actually not that calm but it's flyable completely flyable so yeah let me give you guys my COVID story so about two and a half weeks ago I started getting I don't know, cold like symptoms started getting like some sinusy stuff, a little head space, like head spaciness. I don't know how to describe it. Describing the symptoms of COVID for me has been hard actually, but I'll do my best. In any case, I started feeling a little bit sick and uh, I didn't know what to make of it, right? It's been, I don't know, how many months? I've been, I've been careful. I don't go out except to the gym, uh, which is, I'm guessing where I got it from. But in any case, I started feeling a little bit sick and then. Uh, one of the nights, I had like shivers, I was sweating, I was cold at the same time as, you know, like those cold sweats you get, shivering, and um, I was like, all right, I gotta go to the doctor. So I went to the doctor, COVID test, and it was positive. So I thought, well, okay, young, healthy, I'll probably be through it in a few days. Well, it was probably only two or three days of feeling like that. One really bad night where I was like, the, had the shivers and, and the sweats, like I was saying. But then I woke up soaking wet, uh, you know, having like sweat so bad over the night. And then after that, I felt like a thousand times better. But you know, you know how you feel after you have the flu. You still felt, you still feel sick. You just feel better than you did. Well, that feeling stayed with me for like the next ten days. I'm just now t today and yesterday feeling like actually better like to the point where I can go out and do things go back to the gym fly things like that but I still feel like this head thing I don't know what it's like it's like a, it's almost like I had two beers yesterday that's what it feels like I get hangovers really easy if I have two beers I wake up the next day feeling kind of shitty that's what I feel like and it's super annoying but I did quarantine obviously didn't leave the house uh, for <laughs> two weeks that was the worst part actually not being able to leave um, but at the same time, I didn't really feel like leaving either. I, I honestly felt like shit. But yeah, I got you know cleared to go back to work, and I don't know when they, when you get tested, they must send those results to I don't know some some government laboratory because I was getting calls from the South Carolina government, DHEC or whatever they're called, and they're asking me my symptoms and asking me like, hey, we gotta ask you some questions. I was like, alright, they're like, what's your birthday and what do you do for a living? I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't really feel comfortable with that, even though, I mean, that information is pretty easily attainable. I'm just not going to voluntarily give it away. Um, but, yeah, I didn't volunteer that information, but I got COVID and everyone knew. Even my work knew. My work called me. I worked for Cummins, and they called me, and they were asking me questions and saying, you know, don't don't go to work. I'm like, well, I haven't been to work in a year anyway, so been in the plant, I mean. So, I'm like, okay, good. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a weird experience. It's, it was scary at first when I found out I had it because I I felt sick for two days already. So I knew my wife and my kids had it. Um, that was the scariest part. I, first thing I asked was, okay, what do I do about my kids? He says, how old are they? I'm, I told him their ages. They're both really young. And he said, he's like, oh, don't worry. They'll be fine. This is what the doctor said. And I was like, okay. Um, that's kind of a helpless feeling. You know, you know I don't. It's just so much, I don't know, 
I feel like there's no good place to get information about this this virus because it's been so politicized. So you have to question the source of anything. Um, and really, I, I've only been going off of what the safest thing is to do and then what, you know, personal accounts have been. So uh, I, I felt pretty helpless about my kids, but they, they honestly showed no symptoms. They had like a tiny cough and they didn't slow down at all. They just kept on going, you know. Um, and my wife felt sick for like two days and then she was fine. So it hit me the hardest. But um, yeah, it was, it was a helpless feeling when it came to my boys. Um, and then the most, fr- not the most frustrating, another frustrating thing was I asked the doctor, I says, okay, what do I do? What, you know, what do I do? He goes, oh, just, you know, take vitamin D and vitamin C. I'm like, I already do that. I take vitamins every day. He says, okay, we'll just keep doing that. You'll be fine. Oh, a ton of deer down here. Look at that. I see him running through the trees, no way. Um, he said, just keep doing that. I said, all right. And then I left and went home and quarantined myself and called all the people that I had recently seen and told them to go get tested, which surprisingly none of them had it because the night that I started feeling symptoms, um, I had hung out with a big group of friends and none of them got it. And I hugged them. <laughs> so maybe I just wasn't contagious at the time. I don't know. But I was happy they didn't have it. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Frustrating. So I go home and do nothing. And then I get a call from a pharmacy. And like, yeah, we've had a prescription for you for a Z-Pack for the past week. You going to come get it? I'm like, what? I... So evidently the doctor wrote me a prescription. Well, they do electronically. So he sent an electronic prescription to um, a, the, you know, the pharmacy. It didn't tell me. So I was supposed to be on antibiotics this whole time. And I was not. So that pissed me off, which may be the reason why it lasted longer than it should have. I don't know. But that was frustrating. And then that whole that whole day was actually frustrating. I went to the pharmacy because they called me to come in. It was like 30 minutes away. I went to go get it because it was sent to the wrong pharmacy, of course. I go there and like, yeah, you got to come back in, in three hours. I was like, you guys just called me 30 minutes ago and told me to come get it. And she's like, well, I don't know who told you that. But it's not ready. I was like, look, you guys just called me. Can you please just get it? And then she reaches on the shelf and hands it to me. Like, it was ready. <laughs> it was ready. And she, I don't know. Talking about it gets me pissed off. I was annoyed. Anyway, so maybe that prolonged the symptoms. I don't know. But, um, yeah, <laughs> that, that looming spaciness was the worst and I was you know I worked through the whole thing I only took one day off is the day that I was felt really sick I just took the day off to rest but other than that I was working from home of course and um, I I was forgetting like simple words I'm even still having trouble with it but I would forget like I remember I was trying to think of the word tolerance which is a word I use all the time at work this is talking about a, an engineering print and I couldn't think of the word tolerance and it was on a call with a customer I just felt like a moron I was like I had to apologize. Like, I don't know what's going on, guys. I feel terrible today. I've feel, feel, been feeling sick. <laughs> but that spaciness that people tell you about, that is real. That is for sure real. Um, but, yeah, that's my COVID story. Um, happy it wasn't worse. You know, when you get it, it's kind of spooky because, like I said, you don't really know what, what who to believe. And um, But as far as sicknesses go, it wasn't, like, a bad sickness. I've been way sicker than that. The flu is worse than that. It's just, this is annoying. It just lasts for a long time. And then you have that, that mystery surrounding it that makes you kind of nervous. Um, but that's it. This is the first day that I felt really good, and I'm glad to be out flying. This airport is so cool, man. Um, a buddy who I fly paramotors with actually just rented a hangar here. Um, like, recently, within the last week, I think. And he, um, he's got a Quicksilver in there. And, um, so, maybe he'll be up today flying, too, but... Yeah, this is a fun airport right by that uh, cement plant. If you guys watched my video where I flew with my buddy Eric, uh, Eric Farewell from Aviator Paramotor, that's where I took him. I took him to that cement plant, and I actually did take him to this airport. We didn't land. We just buzzed around it, but he's been here. So, all right, man, I'm going to fly around and enjoy this day. It's chilly, so maybe I'll do some touch and goes and warm myself up, but... Uh, we'll see how it goes. And it's right next to a golf course, but it's on approach. So technically, I don't really feel bad about buzzing the golfers today. All right. I'll catch you guys in the bit.